What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of... Fazlu. Today we're going to be talking about something very, very exciting, and that's the next book in the Fazbear Fright series that is dropping this Tuesday, the 6th of July. The book is called The Puppet Carver, and I have a lot of predictions on uh, what these stories could be about, what these stories could imply, and how these stories could fit into the conclusion of the Stitch Wraith story. Gumdrop Angel has set the bar really high for the rest of the Fazbear Frights books, uh, and uh, it's going to be difficult for the, the public cover to top all of those stories. However, I have actually been spoiled with a minor detail in one of these stories that I will be talking about the, in the end, just in case you don't want spoilers. Uh, and believe me, the theories that this brings is insane. <laughs> Speaking of insane, you must be completely insane to not subscribe to me. Imagine watching like five of my videos, enjoying them, and not subscribing. Couldn't be you. Guys, I say this every day, we're 200 subscribers away from 10,000. Oh my god. That's amazing. Just remember, if you do enjoy this video, the subscribe button is right there and you can always unsubscribe at any time. One reason you might want to subscribe is because the minute The Puppet Carver comes out, I am going to be creating audiobooks on all of the stories with the words on the screen so you can read along with me. So you won't want to miss out on that opportunity. That rhymed. <laughs> Speaking of opportunities, it's a good time to talk a little about the description of each story. We're going to leave the first story until last because I have a little bit more to talk about with that one. Uh, but the second story is called Jump for Tickets. And uh, already with the title, I'm assuming this one is going to be extremely messed up. So let's read the description. Frustrated by an unfair arcade game, Colton throws himself into re-engineering the device at any cost. So this is interesting to me. The unfair arcade game is clearly going to be one where you jump loads or you jump on a beat or you have to jump over hurdles or something but as it says it's going to be very unfair so he's, he's gonna get very angry at it and he's gonna want to alter the game so that he gets more tickets. That begs the question who is Colton because at first he sounds like a kid playing an arcade game to get tickets to get a prize, get a toy. However, then we hear that he's going to re-engineer the game. So he clearly already has a lot of knowledge on the technological side of arcade games and engineering in general. So could it be a worker at the arcade? I don't think so. Could it be an actual engineer? Probably not. My guess is that he's just a teen. He's, he's just a computer student um, who knows a lot about engineering and stuff. Uh, but I do want to know why he wants like so many tickets so bad. Uh, maybe he has some kind of anger, anger issues and it's less about the tickets but rather about like the pride of being able to do this game, you know. I think based on the fact that this takes place at an arcade uh, means that it's probably going to take place at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. However, I don't really understand what the threat of this story is actually going to be. Uh, he will most likely deserve it for being greedy and jealous but I don't know what in this story could be potentially dangerous for him. Uh, a possibility for me is like something that we saw in Hide and Seek where Shadow Bonnie actually comes out of the game and punishes the main character. Uh, I'm actually very unsure about this story, but intrigued because I know that the writers are somehow going to find a way to make this horrifying and I have high hopes for this story, uh, just based on the title alone. Let's talk about the third story, Pizza Kit. Marley's best friend goes missing on a tour of the Freddy's Pizza Factory. Uh, she knows what really happened, but her guilt isn't the only thing threatening to eat her alive. First off, love the description of the story. It's already got me caught on. Uh, for some weird reason, this already reminds me a lot of Michael Afton. Uh, the reason is because just like Marley's friend goes missing, Michael's sister goes missing. Uh, and imagine what he was thinking when his sister just went completely missing. And on the same day, the circus pizza world thing shut. <laughs> It's also the fact that he goes down to the sister location and knows what actually happened to his sister Elizabeth with Baby. 
I don't know, I feel like there's a small parallel there. Not much, I guess. Um, the other thing I like is her, is the line, her guilt isn't the only thing threatening to eat her alive. I reckon Michael probably felt guilty after both his brother and his sister's death. So I'm gonna watch out for some Michael parallels in this story, and I think you should too. Uh, also because Marley sounds like she's going to be the hero in the story, much like Michael fighting against his father. For some reason, I'm also getting big vibes off of this story that it's gonna have some gore, or a really gory ending, uh, just to finish off the book. Just, just a little cherry on top. The question I have is, what is going to be the thing that is trying to eat her alive? Uh, much like the first story, what's gonna be the threat? <laughs> I, genu I, I genuinely can't think of an animatronic that this would apply to. Uh, so I'm guessing it's just some random animatronic. Something that would be a cool concept for me uh, would be the Threddles. Uh, mainly because we haven't had a story about them yet, and I think that could be quite interesting. Uh, why would they be in a pizza factory? God knows. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's, it's a cool idea. Fred was in a story. Another big lore point in the story is going to be Marley's friend suddenly going missing. Uh, how's that going to happen? Will it be some kind of Afton formation? Uh, is it going to be the animatronic, or is she just literally going to wander off and go missing somewhere? Um, either way, Marley knows what happened. Marley knows about it, so she must have been able to see her get captured or taken or whatever. Uh, I love how they're doing tours uh, at a pizza, pizza factory as well. Uh, I would go. I would go. Maybe it's a method of capturing children by using the scent of pizza, uh, warm crusty pizza in the factory, uh, and then snatching the kids away when, when everyone's distracted. Um, I just, I just think that's a funny thing, you know, you know pizza factory tour. <laughs> Let's quickly touch on the stitch rate because last time we ended it on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, personally, I think the scraping noise animatronic is going to be Julius from the breaking wheel as that story doesn't really have any connections to the main story yet. Um, it also sounds a lot like Mangle, uh, which I assume is paralleled by Julius. Why is he going to be a significant character to Jake's story? I don't have a clue, actually. I, I don't know. Uh, it's somewhat clear that Jake has positive emotions rather than Andrew's bad agony, so that is... I, I, I guess that's able to, like, reverse the effects of agony? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Julius can be cured in some way and they work together or something. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. In terms of Larson, he's got a ball with, uh, with blood on it. He's gonna track the DNA of the blood. He's going to probably find out it's Oswald, and somehow Oswald is going to be able to help him on his quest. Once again, I have absolutely no idea how any of this is going to end, which is good because it leaves me with more, more of a surprise when I read it. Now, the final story I want to talk about is going to be The Puppet Carver, the first story in this book. So, the description is, desperate to keep his kiddie pizzeria from bankruptcy, Jack lets his animatronics tech pitch him a new invention that might just give him some perspective. Clearly the new invention is going to be a puppet carver of some sorts. I'd imagine by the book cover you could combine some wood with something else, which we're going to be talking about in a minute, um, and then it will become an alive puppet. I'd imagine the puppets are going to turn on their creator and they're going to be evil, uh, if you look on the cover, actually, I have noticed that the one in the center has a top hat like Freddy, the one on the right has a red bow tie like Bonnie, and the one on the left just looks a lot like Susie in general. It's clear that this is a parallel to the missing children, which is a huge lore point that we should not ignore while reading this. What it will mean, I don't know. Maybe the puppets are made of the souls of the missing children, but I have a better theory. And it's at this point I'm going to warn you that there is going to be one minor spoiler for this story. So if you want to stay completely spoiler free, then click away now. Thank you so much for watching. I was spoiled this uh, from my Discord server, actually, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I wasn't because it's kind of a big reveal um, that I wish I first got while I was reading. Um, but it's become apparent that Fazgu is going to be making a return in this story. If you don't know what Fazgu is, essentially just read He Told Me Everything and you might understand at the moment I have read on He Told Me Everything and I don't really understand still what it is, um, but I believe it's a way of taking souls and making them into Arby's, I guess, armies. 
At the end of He Told Me Everything, all of the children in the lab got replaced by replicas of themselves, and I believe that the science teacher is actually evil. Uh, in this story, we have a similar plot. The creator of the puppet carver is going to be the evil one in this story, and he is going to get souls and Fazgu and make them into puppets. That's just my theory. I don't know what reason this will be for, uh, but I believe it's going to introduce the fact that Fazgu is important to us. Just as Remnant is important, just as Agony is important. So what do you think? Guys, no spoilers in the comments. No spoilers uh, if you have read the, the, the full thing. Uh, the book is coming out on Tuesday. Tuesday? Oh god. My audiobooks are going to be coming out on the same week. Uh, hopefully I'll get them all out in, in that week. Um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for it. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you enjoyed. And tell me your thoughts below. Uh, I, I would love to hear them. Uh, so yeah. I will see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Goodbye.